Hello everyone and welcome to Net Zero Week brought to you by YPO and iNetwork. I'm Gavin Rimmington, Head of Public Sector at YPO and I'll be facilitate, facilitating today's webinar around the LGA Climate Change Sector Support Offer. This session will focus on how across the country councils are taking urgent actions in their local areas with partners in their local communities to combat the negative impacts of climate change and to deliver net zero carbon by 2050. The aim of the LGA's Climate Change Support Programme is to help councils and residents to reach their local carbon reduction targets by adapting and mitigating the effects of climate change. The presentation will explain the offer of support to councils in reaching those aims. I'm delighted to be joined by our speaker today, Grace Abel, Programme Manager Productivity from the LGA. Just a couple of housekeeping items to mention before we start. As you can see, there's a chat box on the side of your screen where you can submit any questions you might have for the panel, which we'll try to answer at the end of the session. Depending on how many questions there are, we might not have time to answer them all, but we'll follow them up on email after Net Zero Week. You can also use the menu icon on the top left of your screen to navigate back to the event agenda, where you can all see all up and coming webinars. If you want to register for any more webinars, please follow the link at the bottom of your screen. Now, without further ado, I'll pass over to Grace. Thank you so much, Gavin. Really appreciate you um, introducing me and for having me today. Um, such a pleasure to be here. Um, and as Gavin said, I am the Programme Manager for Productivity at the Local Government Association, which works on the Climate Change Sector Support Programme um, for the LGA, which supports councils in their net zero and biodiversity aims. Um, I'm here today to talk about a variety of tools, guides, events, um, training and different programmes that local authorities might like to pick up and use whilst they are working in, in, with their local areas on net zero. Um, we are supported by a number of different people. Um, obviously, councils um, and officers through our Climate Action Group are fundamental to our offer and also members through our Improvement and Innovation Board, as well as the UK government who actually funds this programme. Um, so, following a declaration of the climate emergency at the LGA conference in July 2019, the LGA has developed an improvement and support offer for councils to address the climate response. Um, and as Gavin said, the aim of the LGA's sector-led improvement climate change programme is to help councils and residents to reach their local carbon reduction targets by adapting and mitigating the effects of climate change. This includes an array of support offers across our improvement division and beyond. So we look to share good practice across councils, um, provide leadership, training and development, productivity work, research and information. And we also work very closely with local partnerships, which is an organisation co-owned by the government and the LGA. In the last year, so since February 2020, um, the LGA has engaged with nearly 90% of all councils in England and Wales, and they have participated on the LGA Climate Change Programme. Local authorities, as everybody knows, um, has a crucial role to play in achieving the UK's 2050 net zero greenhouse gas emissions target. And to help with some of that, we've produced a councillor's workbook on the local pathway to net zero. This workbook helps councillors to um, both gain new insights and existing offers and offers of assistance and key skills to be their most effective selves in their roles as they lead their organisations and their local places towards net zero. The workbook outlines outline some of the wider benefits of action, um, including co-benefits of working towards a net zero economy, and also the opportunities which local authorities can take for action, um, as well as further information and, gui and guidance for signposting. The LJ also runs a Leadership Essentials programme for elected members on the climate emergency. 
This programme helps leaders and portfolio holders to explore the crucial local leadership role in responding to the climate emergency and is a two day programme where local authorities um, can come together to share and learn with one another to talk about community engagement, action planning within their own local areas, current climate change issues and how to bring partners together to deliver meaningful changes. We have um, delivered this program to 75 councillors so far and the cost of the program is fully subsidised. Another tool or help I suppose that we are also providing to councils um, is something called the Greenhouse Gas Accounting Tool which has been developed between local partnerships and the LGA to provide a straightforward and consistent approach for councils seeking to calculate their own carbon baseline. It's a free tool available for all councils and he's also been endorsed by the Committee for Climate Change, which is the independent organisation advising UK government on how to reach net zero by 2050. The tool produces summary tables and charts to help councils understand their most significant sources of emissions and they can also be compared to other councils for benchmarking through our LGM form or our data um, our data repository. Um, the Net Zero Innovation Programme was launched last year and it is with the recognition that universities have been working in the climate change space for a substantial period of time and therefore have valuable research that can help um, councils who've also been working on this agenda for years and years to achieving their ambitions. The programme is delivered through a collaboration between the LGA and University College London, bringing together local authorities, universities and other stakeholders to address climate challenges at the local level and to seek routes to achieve Council's net zero commitments. The LGA has been working to partner universities with councils to explore ways of achieving their carbon emissions targets. We're currently working with 12 partnerships across the country and the topics for which are outlined on the slide. Also in partnership with local councils and UCL, we are releasing monthly podcasts called Together Towards Net Zero, which councils can listen to for free on SoundCloud and on any other podcast service. Um, delivered in partnership between the LJ and the design Council um, is another program which we run to equip councils with design skills and methods to apply their toughest local climate challenges. The aims of the program are to build cross-sector partnerships, to build design skills and capabilities within councils and across their partners, deliver um, acceleration projects, gain new insights and create a community of practice. We have been working with 13 local authorities um, who are just coming to the end of their journey through this programme at the moment and their learnings will be shared on our website in due course. The green economy. Um, so last year the LJ um, released a report, a green jobs report, which outlined which local authorities have potential to create green jobs in their local areas and in what industries between now and 2050. Building on that piece of work, we set up some action learning sets to support um, delivery and for councils to speak to one another, to share good practice and to understand from, um, from other local areas how we are working to create green jobs at a practical level. 30 councils participated in this programme and um, we're now looking to evolve it following a report that we released at the end of June, beginning of July, to um, evolve it into helping more green jobs to be created in the housing retrofit supply chain. So um, do keep your eyes peeled. But if you'd like to know what learnings each councils have um, have been afforded throughout this programme, please do check out our webpage, um, which also has some, a blog about a webinar that we did about housing retrofit and the green economy as well. In collaboration with the Centre for Governance and Scrutiny, we produced a document to scrutinise 
Council Climate Action for to assess both officers and councillors. Um, there are 10 key questions which you could ask if you're looking to scrutinise climate change and your climate action plan. Um, they are divided into um, things like council, the council's leadership, adopting a clear and strategic plan um, to mainstream mitigation and adaptation, questions about supply chains um, and procurement models, transport and energy plans, um, what's happening with your existing housing stock, um, health and social care, quality and diversity, the kind of the list goes on, but um, could well be a good basis and a good starting point for scrutiny when looking at this um, wide, wide area of work, because obviously realised that it is a huge area. Um, an offer which we are looking to and is coming up to align with COP15, um, in October 2021, we will be launching a offer around biodiversity to help councils, both members and officers, to um, develop in this area. The e-learning will include an introduction to biodiversity, help to create biodiversity action plans, and some much more broad um, broader things, I will look at much broader things to help councils protect their biodiversity in their local area. We also ran a webinar at the end of May um, on place-based leadership for biodiversity and the blog can be found on our webpage. Behaviour change is um, such a huge area where individuals can make an impact in our local communities and where citizens can also make a difference. Um, behaviour change tools and techniques are vital resources for councils to work with their local communities to sustain or change residents' behaviour to reduce climate change. Last year we wrote a um, behaviour change and the environment guide on different topics um, including case studies for councils to successfully work in this area and it takes you through six different steps um, all applied to different examples where we can make a difference to the environment. Um, for example, the New Forest, um, Dish, New Forest District Council worked on the LGA Behavioural Insights Programme to support novel messaging and imagery on advertising trailers at three sites and they decided to dispense rubbish bags on beaches. This intervention reduced litter by 10.8 tonnes over, over a one-month period, which is a reduction of 29% saving an estimated 10k in waste collection costs. Looking forward, and I couldn't give a climate change presentation um, in 2021 without mentioning COP26, which stands for the Conference of the Parties, and is the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference. This is the first time that the UK will be hosting it. And as a conference that will be hopefully held in July, uh, sorry, <laughs> in November in um, Glasgow from the 1st to 12th of November. The conference will bring together international delegations to agree on a process to accelerate um, our progress towards the Paris Agreement. The conference itself and the lead up to it this year has four goals, mitigation, adaptation, finance and local collaborations. The LGA are looking for case studies to showcase in the run up to COP um, to make sure that we promote local authorities and the excellent work that they have been doing in this area, even during the pandemic. Our webpage has and hosts many case studies from local authorities already, so please do check it out. Um, and we have a lot of um, talking heads videos on the local path to net zero webpage. Um, this is the final slide, just to wrap up, to say where you can access some of these resources. Um, so that is our webpage improvement um, improvement hub, which hosts all of our content, including LJ resources, council case studies, and also resources from elsewhere, so that it's the go-to place for local government on climate change. That's our email address, climate at local.gov.uk. So please do get in touch if you have any suggestions for how we can improve our offer 
or um, anything that isn't answered within this presentation. And um, please do sign up for our e-bulletin as well, um, which can also be found on the web page. It's a monthly bulletin which incorporates and encompasses all of the work that we've been doing that month and is um, a good summary and signposting opportunity. Um, so thank you so much for listening and I'm now going to stop sharing my slides. Thanks for that, Grace. I think um, I, I certainly felt there was a wealth of information and knowledge that can be tapped into. I'm sure uh, participants in the audience did as well. Um, so thank you very much for that information. Uh, if it's OK, it sort of facilitators right to maybe ask just a couple of questions before we open it up to the audience. Um, one thing I noticed throughout the sort of last 14 months through my role at YPO, um, is around discussions around climate change and the net zero agenda. Uh, they didn't really stop, they actually probably increased. Um, so I'm assuming that was the same for you guys at LGA. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there was such a huge wave of climate declarations, climate emergency declarations in 2019, and huge energy from both citizens and politically um, in some areas to push this agenda forward. That um even with the pandemic there was um it was kind of working alongside to to reach net zero um we ran a sort of a green reset webinar last year as well to think about how we can recover in a green way and i think that is at a lot of people's at the forefront of people's minds when we're thinking about how we recover from covid um or at least live with covid and how we do that in a green way um, and I also think with COP26 coming up, which obviously, it was obviously delayed a year, it was meant to happen in 2020, but it's now happening at the end of this year. Um, there's a big impetus to highlight local government work because there's just so much of it going on in such a variety of areas. Um, and obviously the um, mandate and law of, of central government to reach this target by 2050, um, so uh, yeah, the momentum didn't stop. And in fact, the LGA um, have produced this work that I've just presented um, within the last year as well. Great, thanks for that, Grace. I suppose also um, something I, I've seen coming across is a, almost a total place approach to net zero. So obviously LGA, local authority, local government, but covering all public, private and voluntary groups and employees in a locality is again is that something a theme that you guys are seeing at the LGA as well yeah definitely um, and I think local authorities have this huge place shaper role that they have the the connections and the influence to be working with public sector organizations businesses and obviously citizens as well and it's a two-way partnership all the time between all of them um and yeah through some of our support at the lga we've done kind of seminars on place shaping working with all these organizations to reach net zero and how we can collaborate together not least on our net zero innovation program um with universities um but also through citizens assemblies as well um the uk one was run last year in 2020 um and there's a lot of learning from what the public actually want from net zero and how we can make changes at a local level. Um, but local authorities are also running their own um, systems juries or um, or kind of communications and engagement with with systems as well. So yeah, it's a whole, it's a big, big effort across everybody, not just one single person or organisation. Great. Thanks for that. Uh, and I suppose also just picking up from uh, your presentation, Grace, um, I'm really interested in uh, the sort of the green recovery. And I know you touched upon sort of the types of jobs that um, could be uh, created through the green recovery. Um, how big do you think it could be for, for sort of UK PLC um, in terms of generating jobs and investment, etc.? Yeah, I mean, there is huge opportunity um, to, to work in this area. Um, I think the role of the LGA is to help local authorities to think about their action plans in their local areas um, and how we can work with FE colleges 
um, further education to maybe create more apprenticeships in this area, um, how we can work with businesses and incentivize businesses to take on new people into this line of work. Um, and obviously, in recovery from the pandemic, some, um, very unfortunately, some industries may have fallen a bit, but there may well be an opportunity to grow the green economy coming up, um, kind of alongside that to retrain or to skill up in this area. Um, so that there are um, huge opportunities. And I would say that our LGA Green Jobs Report um, is a good kind of signpost to think about where different geographies can work in different industries as well and where those opportunities might lie between now and 2050. Great, thanks. And my, my final question, Grace, uh, obviously a lot of content, a lot of information and a lot's going on uh, at the LGA with, with councils across the country. Um, I suppose um, as, a, as an attendee, what's the, there's one thing I had to take away as a one takeaway, one thing I should do uh, after hearing all of that wealth of information and knowledge sharing, what do you think that should be? Um, I think the best thing to do probably is to sign up to the e-bulletin. Um, that is a really good information source has loads of links videos links to reports um and different contacts different case studies and sharing of good practice um and so on and so on and it's a summary of of all of our work at the lga and local partnerships as well so to keep in touch um i'd say that's probably the best thing best thing to do if i were in a local authority Great, thanks. Well, uh, I've taken enough time answering questions. I can see uh, one or two popping through, so uh, we'll just get round to them. Right. Great, we're now in the live Q&A segment session, uh, and there's a few questions that have come in um, on the Q&A panel, so please feel free to add any more. But uh, one specifically come in, uh, Grace, around uh, is the carbon emission benchmarking data publicly available? Yeah, absolutely. So this is from our greenhouse gas accounting tool. Um, and we really encourage councils to fill out the, their own data for their own local area and return it to, to us, to both the LJ and local partnerships, um, to be able to benchmark um, this data so that we kind of all we're all brought up to um, the knowledge of what everybody else is doing. Um, so that's publicly available on LG Inform, which is the LGA's data repository. Um, and we've had about um, 20 councils who've returned their data. And it, it is a really good source of understanding where councils have progressed in certain areas of um, their carbon reduction and where good practice can emerge and kind of looking at other councils to see what they're doing and speaking to them and um, and potentially, yeah, kind of stealing that good practice and learning from others, um, which is definitely the vision for the tool. Um, the, the tool actually is going through some updates at the moment from um, Bayes have kind of advised on some of the some of the updates. So that will be available in July, kind of mid month. And we're actually running a webinar, local partnerships running a web July the 13th at 11 o'clock, um, the details of which will be in the e-bulletin in early July um, to explain further about the tool and its updates. So, um, yeah, encourage kind of uh, looking out for that. But yeah, we definitely need um, councils to return to make make the um, repository, the data repository, the best it can be. Um, so yeah, encouragement for that. And thank you to those who've returned it already. Great, thanks for that, Grace. Sounds a really uh, key tool for councils and obviously uh, something that helps progress the whole agenda uh, for the sector and obviously the wider public sector as well. Um, another question that's come in, and I think uh, we'll be hearing lots about COP26, but one specifically around how will you work with councils in the lead up to COP26? Yeah, um, so I suppose alongside the biodiversity e-learning offer um, that I explained that's going to be launched 
um, in COP15, which is the 15th Biodiversity Conference, along sitting alongside COP26. Um, that will be launched in October. We've got some other pieces of support that we're also um, doing. So we are arranging some podcast recordings um, with a load of councils and experts on community engagement because realising that COP could be a real opportunity to create a kind of Olympic style 2012 UK atmosphere as we are the hosts. Um, there's a big question of how we engage and bring our residents with us and how we create that legacy. Um, so we're putting together kind of five podcast sessions um, being run by our lead counsellor, Councillor Liz Green, um, hosted by, I should say. Um, and then there's going to be some interviews with um, various experts and councils on how we can start to or continue to engage our communities on this really important climate change piece of work um, and that a lot of that learning has come from the UK Climate Assembly um, knowledge and understanding that we got last year so things like how do we inform properly about the consequences of climate change um, and how do we try and prevent it and adapt to it um, but then also how do we gain consent from our residents as to so that we don't just kind of go full steam ahead but there was very much a message of if you ask us then we'll tell you that it could be okay and and we can get a um sort of consent to be able to to make these changes locally like in transport or through our buildings or in our own housing even um so yeah it, it's a it's very much intended to be a training series um kind of a universal piece of learning and, and support um, as opposed to a kind of the facilitated training which is really great online but maybe you can only have about 20 people but we're, we're hoping through this podcast um, everyone will be able to access it and you can listen to it I don't know whilst you're cooking dinner or like on a walk or something um, so hopefully it will um, it'll be good so yeah kind of keep a lookout for that around around the autumn time probably um and then the other thing we're doing is running a past the planet campaign past the planet um and essentially it's a showcase of what local government are doing on climate change because um councils across england and wales and across the uk are doing so much good work in this area and it's one of the lga's roles to not only promote that to um central government and showcase it but also to other councils so we're looking um over from starting from the beginning of july to cop in november each month we'll focus on a region and also on a cop goal so the cop goals being uh, mitigation adaptation finance and collaboration and we're spotlighting different councils depending on what they've worked on so it might be something to do with like the um, combination of green jobs or it might be um an energy um an energy show piece um or a biodiversity planting trees whatever whatever it is we'd love to hear from you so um on our web page um if you just type in lga climate change um climate change support offer she'll come up with our main page and on there we've got um just an ms form just to say like this is who you are, this is the showcasing of good practice that you'd like to promote. And um, yeah, do get back to us because we're really, really keen to hear from you and to spotlight it through our social media channels. Um, our social, our Twitter is at LGA comms, um, if you'd like to follow it. Um, and obviously through our e-bulletin, we'll, we'll be doing that as well. But yeah, we're hoping to get a bit of a gif with the planet and kind of pass the planet across the country, um, starting from down south all the way up to Glasgow um, by November. Um, so yeah, those are a couple of things that we're doing. And then obviously in November, um, depending on the outcomes of whether it be a virtual conference or obviously it's going ahead um, um, physically at, the, at this moment. And the G7 last week was um, positive to show that it could be done in a physical way. Um, but yeah, obviously kind of um, we'll wait and see, but planning both um, and see what we do um, virtually kind of alongside the normal COP activities or the planned COP activities that are happening by central government, we're looking to do a kind of culmination of past the planet and a showcase of um, good practice in, in one of the weeks um, in November. So, um, but yeah, really keen to hear from you as councils and if there's 
in practice or any other ideas that you're interested in in the run up to COP26. Um, really keen to hear from you and I suppose um, the other distinction I should probably make um, which I'm not sure that I did in the presentation was that the LJ is made up of kind of two teams with climate change so I'm in the support and improvement team which helps councils um, directly to reach their net zero goals um, but we also have our policy team um, which sits um, work alongside but sits slightly separately and um, focuses on um, working with government and influencing policy and government on climate change. Um, so they have um, their section of activity on COP26 um, alongside us. Okay, thanks for that, Grace. I think the key message there is uh, obviously with COP26, there's going to be a lot of activity. Keep your eyes peeled uh, for all the channels with LGA. Uh, I suppose with Pastor Planning, just make sure you, uh, you're you calling to Yorkshire on your way by. A um, couple of interesting questions have also just come in. Uh, one's around what plans do you have to support councils in the 2021-2022 financial year? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely, because I sort of spoke about what we have done and things about what we um, are going to do in this financial year. But yeah, worth saying. So. Um, well, I suppose since we started this financial year, we have released the councillor workbook, which I spoke about. And um, we've also released some guidance to help local authorities measure scope three emissions in social care. Um, and we're looking to do something similar, perhaps in waste, um, that will also in turn lead to an update in the greenhouse gas accounting tool as well to keep it completely up to date and relevant. Um, so those are the kind of the plans for the the carbon emissions work and the measurement of it, I suppose, the data work. Um, we're running a, a lot of webinars, pretty much kind of monthly webinars, our LJ Green webinar series. Um, so on Tuesday of this week, um, we ran a low energy housing webinar, the blog of which um, will go online on our LGA website um, to see kind of what the speakers had to say, and they were all um, fantastic talking about the housing retrofit and um, both retrofit and new build um, that they are working on which is great um, we've got another webinar coming up next month in July um, about sustainable procurement where we'll launch our sustainable procurement guide um, again sharing good practice from other councils um, but also kind of um, the guide gives some stretch points and some template ideas on, on what you can do with your um, procuring sustainably. Um, and also next month, if you haven't signed up already, LJ Conference is taking place um, from the 6th to the 8th of July, should hopefully get that right. Um, Climate Change are having a plenary session on the 7th of July, and um, you can that's free to sign up to any council um, can sign up for that for free. Um, so definitely encourage that. Um, we've got a really good program of work um, building on the green jobs work that I spoke about um, in the presentation. We're also um, looking into some work on building housing retrofit skills because that was one of the really big areas where council said we really need some support actually um, and also following the Green Homes Grant in building skills in housing retrofit. Um, given the massive challenge that there is in that area. Um, so we look at um, running, we're going to run some action learning sets from September of this year that will be launched at a webinar on September the 15th about building housing retrofit skills. Um, and that will um, be offered to councils. We're hoping then to kind of, in between those action learning sets, build a community of practice with construction workers, FE colleges, higher education, suppliers um, in the supply chain and so on to create this kind of national network of people interested in housing retrofit skills. Um, so definitely um, looking to do that. And um, we also obviously have our Net Zero Innovation Programme, which is our um, collaboration with University College London. And um, through that programme, um, 
we're probably going to launch it around the autumn time and it will the this kind of purpose of that program will be for councils and universities to come together and create universal tools for other partnerships across the country to use as well so for example this year we've had ones on which was which were in the slides but um kind of creating decarbonization training um a carbon a procurement carbon calculator um some kind of good practice on housing retrofit skills and, and things like that so yeah it's going to shift even more to replicable replicable tools and guides and um things can other new so it's the benefit to the benefit of the whole sector great well uh, thanks for that grace just to let the audience know we've got a we've got another question but we will have time for any more if people want to pop them in um this one's quite a, a long one but just bear with me um funding for net zero seems to be a challenge how often do you see local authorities seeking private finance to fund retrofits etc and do you think there is a tension between environmental objectives and economically and budgetary challenges so i'm not sure if that, that's one you're qualified grace but you're probably more qualified uh, than myself to uh, have a stab at it yeah so um kind of two parts of the question maybe i'll take i'll take the first one um the stuff about private funding and housing retrofit first um i think um there's such a huge challenge and i suppose there's there's kind of different parts of um the housing retrofit challenge so there's the, the social housing or um, council housing stock that councils own um there's also private housing and um it it will be costing a, a, a lot a lot of money um to do both it depends if we're um if we get to a point where we ask i suppose people to fund it themselves for their own private housing and whether councils are going to have enough money to retrofit their own um, housing stock but um it's sort of to be seen how that is going to be funded um the second part of the question um do you mind repeating it gavin sorry yeah sorry uh, do you think there is a tension between environmental object environmental objectives and economic economic budgetary challenges yeah i um and this has come up actually through our um climate action group um there's about 30 councils who feed into our both policy and improvement work at the lga and councils definitely see that there is a tension in trying to reach our environmental and biodiversity goals um and our economic ones too but a lot of people also have the view that we can work on co-benefits which our um, local pathway to net zero workbook really highlights and um ashton's workbook on the co-benefits of climate change um does as well and it kind of goes back to housing retrofit as well as in your question but um how can we ensure in in our race to net zero we create green jobs and um ensure that we do have certain standards of building and and biodiversity um to be able to um marry up I'm not saying it's easy um i'm not saying we're there at all but um there's a tension but i hope that there's a way through through co-benefits and, and persuasion of those arguments um to get to um place that we want to be great Thanks for that, Grace. I think you're right in terms of looking at the total end-to-end -end, um, ROI investment uh, and obviously the, the green economy. Um, we've sort of run out of questions from the audience, but just one observation, uh, I suppose, again, it's just facilitators uh, privilege, but I know the importance of local leadership uh, on these matters. And I suppose um, you touched upon the councillor's work block on the local pathway to net zero uh, it might just be useful um just to expand on that because there's some really really interesting data useful information that can really help people and the local leadership on their journey yeah of course um yeah so this is something which we updated this year we um, launched the council's workbook for climate change in 2017 but we've updated it in 2021 um, and is a compilation of a lot of information from a variety of different areas, including the Committee of Climate Changes um, kind of information and results, which is the independent organisation to advise the government on net zero. 
Um, so it sort of starts off by talking about the importance of climate action, which we hear from um, people that we need to kind of really outline as the kind of persuasive argument of why is this important and why do we need to why do we need to do this and why is it important for local authorities um we then talk about kind of cop 26 and our our role to play there and um very much goes into what the different emissions are and what the different scope one two and three emissions are and um their sources as well as kind of key terminology because i think there's a lot of uh kind of there's a lot of there are lots of words bands about when it comes to climate change and we don't all necessarily know um what everyone's talking about all of the time um so there's a bit of key terminology um and then um some stuff about community engagement which i which i've touched upon and the wide benefits of climate change like health and um having good housing and warm homes and the economy and jobs um and and then and there's a, a really kind of useful image about the opportunities for action for councils um and it kind of goes out into um a diff a, a wider wider circle <clears throat> which you may have seen because we see for climate change sixth carbon budget but it's talking about um councils direct control like their own council buildings um procurement and commissioning which we all know um is a is a big part of it, which our procurement, um, sustainable procurement guide will help with. Um, then place shaping, so our influence with partners and um, both with public, private, and voluntary organisations. Um, our net zero innovation program and our design and the public sector program next to do. Um, policing, um, which Path the Planet is doing, um, to showcase local councils and to ensure that we're on the map um ships and um, kind of about also aligned to place shaping and um involving engaging and communicating um and that's a huge role of a councillor um and uh, yeah and obviously if all of those things are um part of our leadership essentials um program which yeah as i said in the presentation the next one will be in september but the and um, be touched upon there but um, it's meant to be a, a distance learning aid um, for all councillors not just portfolio holders and leaders and those with key responsibility for climate for everybody um, yeah definitely recommend checking it out great well, well thanks for that grace um, i think the questions uh, from the audience have uh, dried up but um, i think for myself i'd just like to thank um, Grace again for excellent content and all the support, great work that colleagues at LJ are doing. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for attending and uh, for all your questions. Uh, and I know it was put in the uh, the questions, but if you, know, if you did enjoy this session, um, I'm sure you'd be interested in our closing panel webinar tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, it's been chaired by my boss, uh, Simon Hill, the MD here at YPO. And he'll be rounding up the week with a panel of local authority and blue light procurement and climate change specialists. So there's still time to register on this uh, on the YPO website but thank you once again for everyone for tuning in thank you for Grace uh, for providing that expertise and the ongoing work that LGA are doing in supporting the sector in this key challenge so many thanks <laughs>